I saw Kamala Harris as being the one that the devil was going to use to push through the White House. And that I saw that early on and actually had a, uh, a vision, which I thought was a warning from the Lord of her at an inauguration. And she had a Bible and she had done something like put a Hindu prayer book with it. And it was like she did an inauguration and was putting her hand on a modified Bible as part of her. Uh, and the Lord told me back then, he said that that is how the devil intends to bring in the destruction of this country. It's the final phase. So what do you think of that junk? coming out of Lance Winnell's mouth. Many of you, we just talked about him in a previous video or so about Lance and the influence that he has upon millions of believers, evangelicals within the movement where he continues to lie and press, not push nonsense out there within society and he won't stop. And you know, we need to talk about this because there's this thing when I asked you in the community tab a week or two ago there about demons, what's this thing about people, everyone calling folks demons and, and witches and all of these types of things. And if you notice, it's just the talk that comes from these types of people and things. So before we go any further, it's been a while for those of you that follow me, I got the notes. The notes are back because we're going to hit some things really quick because we need to talk about this because that type of, you know, I, as I was thinking about this, I remember years ago when a pastor was preaching many years ago and talking about when you telling somebody to go to hell and how damning that is to put that upon some God's creation or something. And, you know, it's a long time ago. I was young when I heard this message, but it made me think, Back to where, you know, Christ during the, in Genesis, the God where he was, uh, uh, you know, creation period. And he made us in his image, in his likeness. And he said that everything was very good. Also, as his creation, us as humans, it, it was good in the eyes of God. And for us as humans to sit there, he, made by him, he cherishes us in his creation. And for us to go around and out of our mouths call somebody a witch as they're doing with Kamala and anybody else that don't that they don't agree with on anything or come up with this witch talk or call you a demon because you are a Democrat or a demon because you're this or you're a demon because of that. You know, it, it shows really, truly these people's character. Because what's up with all the fear tactics and trying to scare folks just like Lance would know. He had a vision and all of a sudden a Hindu Bible. I mean, you see what I I'm talking about? I forgot to add that at the RNC, they were the ones that had a Hindu prayer go forth during their uh, convention. Thank you, everyone. These last 48 hours have been some of the most intense yet most prayerful of our lives. The heinous attack on President Trump and his supporters made all of us pause and seek answers and comfort. I come from a family of Sikh immigrants. I am honored to share with you, my fellow Republicans and guests tonight, a prayer from my faith tradition practiced by over 25 million worldwide. We recite the Ardas prayer before any new endeavor, giving thanks to God and asking for his protection and help to uphold the values of humility, truth, courage, service, and justice for all. To show respect, we cover our heads when we pray. Tu thakar tum pe ardas Jiyo pind sab teri ras Tum mat pita ham barak tere Tumri kirpa masuk kane How they all, it's always got to play this racial craziness that say, with, with that, they ain't said that, he, would he have said that about uh, J.D. Vance's wife or anything? See? But it's always something with these people, with the hate and things. And I have in his notes that whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, God, Christ died for the transgender person. 
Christ died for the woman who had an abortion. Christ died for the Democrat. He died for the Republican. He died for the atheist. He died for the porn star, the drug user. And guess what else? He died for immigrants. So whether these people like it or not, he died for all of us. Because scripture says, what does it say? God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It doesn't say he only gave it to Lance Winnow. Gave his son only to Lance Winnow. He didn't only give his son to Marcus Rogers. He didn't give his son only to this church in Texas with Robert Jefferson, Franklin Graham's, and only these groups of people. He didn't give it only to the Republican Party. He didn't give it, he, did, he didn't die just for only them. He died for the world. He died for all of us because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And lo and behold, Lance would know if you can shine a microscope and go into his life, go into all of these people that are preaching the hate and calling people witches and demons and all of that and go into their lives. You can go into their lives and I guarantee you, boy, if it was, we were to put it up on the screen and find out their sins, the one that so easily besets them as in Hebrew says, or the sin that so easily trips you up because we all got a sin or sins that gets the best of us. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you try to claim that you're so perfect. I don't care how many scriptures you quote. I don't care how many crosses you put up in your house. I don't care how many times you read the Bible. There is a sin or sins in your life that will haunt you to the, the day you get in your grave because all of us, it's a battle. It's a sanctification process. It's a process that we have to continue. That it, some days it might get the best of us. Some days we may move forward and, and think it's all gone. And then that sin will come back and trip us up. So these folks want to give the appearance like they're perfect, like they're great, and that they're, that's this, that they're the next to God, that, there's, you know, that they've got the only connection to God and everybody else, you know, get out of the way. Listen to this nonsense from Steve Schultz and this phony preacher that's sitting there talking about this anointing and all of this stuff. Let's listen to it. God has raised President Trump as a prophet. He is wow. a prophet. And a lot of people don't I see it because I of do. the, because I believe the reason why a lot of the leaders, I'm just going to say this, yeah. don't recognize it because of the religious spirit inside of those people, behind them. There's a religious spirit that's blinding them that that's why they don't see the hand of God on President Trump. He has to be strong. He cannot be a weak uh, vessel of God. Look at Elijah. Look at Elijah. That Look at Moses. Strong. And they picked on Moses. Moses right. was their That's deliverer right. in That's human right. form. God yeah. was in heaven. Yeah. He picked Moses on earth yeah. and Aaron. And yeah. they gave him the same grief because, yeah. you know, what, did you bring us out here to die? Yeah. You know, yeah. and the same yeah. thing. And then they did it to Jesus. And then God comes on earth. And he brings deliverers. He brought yeah. up Joseph, but he brought Trump. And Trump is a deliverer. Uh, and not right. just in the United States, in the earth. And people, if you find yourself saying, I don't like it because of he's so rough, you don't, you wouldn't have met, met, recognized Christ then. Yeah. Because he was a deliverer. You wouldn't have recognized Moses because he was a deliver deliverer. You wouldn't have recognized Joseph. You know, all of these deliverers, if you don't recognize President Trump as a deliverer, you probably have got a spirit that wouldn't have recognized Christ. Now, that's the strongest thing I've ever said, uh, but it kind of bears witness. He's got the anointing of God all over him. All over him. And you hear this? You hear this? You hear them talking? This anointing and comparing to Moses and Joseph and all of this? See, this is where we are. These folks are way out there. These are the folks, they have the nerve to call somebody a witch or a demon or all of these names. And, 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 and you know, it's just a sign of disrespect. It's a sign of disrespect. I mean, for you, 
It's a sign of disrespect. It's a sign of uh, self-righteousness. It's a sign of, you know, you, you, you know all, all the words. We'll use all of the uppity. You name it. For you to act like that and call yourself a believer. And I have in here, you know, I was just thinking like these types of people that act like that. And we know that for if you are a pastor or a leader, let's just stick to a pastor or, or, uh, or so. And you have members. Let's, let's just say, let's use Marcus Rogers for an example. You have members within your congregation that are having troubles personally or within their household or something. Maybe they have a wayward child that's acting a fool and acting crazy or, or experimenting with drugs or experimenting with their sexuality or whatever, whatever. And you got a pastor that talks about people that they don't agree with, don't like their lifestyle or and all of this and call them hateful names. And you, will you feel comfortable going to this pastor and sitting down and sharing your personal business with this person? You think that if they do it out in the open and call people that they don't even know demons and, and witches and all of that, and you sit in their office or in their home, how much more do you think they're going to sit there? Would you feel comfortable? I mean, how much more do you think they're going to uh, uh, sit back and maybe not talk about you like a dog once you leave the premises? Because it, it shows you that if you notice these types of people, if you notice a lot of them, there's never no smiles. There's never no joy. There's never no peace with them. They always having these dreams that you always hear about. Oh, man, oh, I was woken up in the middle of the night and, and I saw it's all of it. Yeah, now, you know, I, I believe in dreams and things like that. But they're always restless because the scripture says there's no rest for the wicked. And this is why many of them are restless because they are living wickedly. They are living wickedly and they are restless and they're being awakened. Constantly, because they don't have no peace. Script God is not the author of confusion. These folks are confused. They're rattled. They're everything. And you go to share. If you, let's just say you, you, you are a person that's struggling with whatever in your life and you just stumble across a church or a ministry online or something like this, and you Come across, I mean, come across, you know, ministry and you hear somebody and you hear them calling people demons and witches and hate, spruing out this, this hate all the time out of their mouths and treating people that kind of way. Why? Why would you say, you know what? I, you know, I, yeah, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to give my life to the Lord. You're not going to want to do that because the whole, mem many of these places, whether the churches, the, the ministries, the whole, cut, they're all under a strong delusion. And the hate is spread all within there, just like you saw in that other video. They're fighting at rallies, fighting, you know, and you can't go to none of this stuff. These folks, but in these churches, they're spruing hate. They have death prayers. Death prayers. What we'll call themselves death prayers over people. Wanting demise and doom and gloom to come to somebody. How dare uh, of the cre beautiful creation that we are beautifully, wonderfully made. And God, he loves us so much that he laid his life down for us. And how dare us set up there and stand behind a sacred desk or a pulpit or wherever we are and preach and preach doom and gloom. Uh, towards people or pray death upon somebody. These folks have lost their minds. And I had to, I mean, this message, I had to make it before I go into these other series of messages because it, it's, it, it has to stop. So if you come across people that are calling people witches, demons, and treating humanity, God's creation like that, and they supposed to be a be a lever and supposed to be fishers of men and supposed to be a witness and, and, and letting their light shine for Christ. You know what? Get away from them. Get away from them. Because these folks are a poor example 
uh, these folks don't represent the Lord. They don't. Many of them don't. They have another agenda. Many of them. It's a whole nother agenda. And it's something that we'll deal with and talk about more in future videos and things like that. But sorry, I'm so fired up because you know I get fired up when I talk about the Lord, fired up when I take the devil head on and punch it right up between the chops. Evangelism for God is the channel where we talk about issues the church are away from. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.